on the conference call, just in passing, like 40 minutes into the phone call, somebody says something about surplus lands in, I don't know, whatever, Kansas, Oklahoma, didn't matter. But the surplus lands thing stuck in my head. So I asked about it and found out that the surplus lands are lands that for one reason or another don't get sold at the tax deed sales. So, hey, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to go to my county and find out about the surplus lands. I'll go back to Flagler County, my little county, where I live, where I know the property. Surplus lands list, we don't have one of those. Okay, let me ask this another way. If I come to an auction at, and the tax deed, for whatever the reason, isn't sold at the auction, what happens to that land? Oh, that goes on our lands available list. <laughs> oh, okay. Can I see your lands available list? Okay, well, so she gives me one, one little sheet of paper got about eight properties on it, and since I know my county, I look at those eight properties and I know those are all vacant lots, and those are in the one subdivision in the entire county where I wouldn't want to be, because it's on the border of Flagler County and St. John's County, and they've never been actually able to finish developing it because the two counties are fighting over who needs to take responsibility for the water and sewage. Flagler saying not us, St. John's County saying not us, and these people can't get water and sewer. So they either have to put in a septic tank or in a well or they're out of luck. Well, no, I don't want those properties either. Oh, wonderful. I'm now five months into this. I've got nothing. Right. Don't get discouraged. Get stubborn. Move on to the next county. I go down to Volusia County. Okay. Do you have a lands available list? Oh, yeah, we have a lands available list. Can I get a copy of it? Sure. She hands me a bunch of papers and charged me a dollar a page for it, but that's okay. 327 properties in that county that you can buy for just the back taxes. Oh, this is great. This is great. This is just what I want. Okay. And in Volusia County, everything is online. So I was able to do a lot of my research online. And I went through 327 properties. Believe me, I went through every single one of those properties online. A lot of it was vacant land. A lot of it was wasteland, um, put aside buffer zone kind of stuff. But I found a bunch of properties that were actually one family houses. And I went, I, I found about 13 of them. And I went out, I mapped it out like, like Drew told you, and went to each one of those properties. And I found, oh God, what I found. I found. There was a house there once, but now it's a slab. There is a house there, but it's leaning over. That looks interesting. There's no roof. But amongst those 13 houses, I found a three-bedroom block house on a slab in Daytona Beach, Florida, on a quarter of an acre. And I paid $4,196 for it. That was on December 28th. It took me five months to do that. But I didn't give up. So congratulate me. I bought this house for $4,200. Now, I had a partner in this. Okay, Within two weeks of my buying this house, Somebody offered us $18,000. Now, this house, by the way, I have to tell you about this house. It was boarded up, but all the windows and doors were intact. And again, it's a block house. The roof looked pretty good. Uh, the, the area was kind of a working class area, but it was a neighborhood watch neighborhood with a, with a park and a church down the street. So it was kind of the kind of area that you wouldn't mind buying a house in. But I hadn't seen the inside of it, because I couldn't look in the window. I couldn't break into it, obviously, so I bought this house sight unseen on the inside. As soon as I got my deed in my hand, I called the locksmith to meet me at that house. To change, and, and the locks were all intact, really nice deadbolt locks, felt relatively new. Meet me at the house, you're going to change the locks on this, this house. So as he's fidgeting with it to open the door, I said to him, okay, guy, 
you know, we're going to open the door and see this house on the inside for the first time together. And he looked at me and he said, you bought this house without seeing what's inside? I said, I bought this house for $4,196. I don't care what's inside. <laughs> we opened the door together and looked at each other. These people had left all of their stuff in this house. They had boxes and boxes of dishes and clothes and power tools and golf clubs and you name it. It was piled, a lot of it was junk, but I mean my daughter got a lawnmower, my partner got a bunch of power tools. <laughs> there was automotive tools in there. You, I mean, you could not imagine what was in this house. So my partner's in the construction industry. He wanted to fix up this house. I said, you know what? Go for it. I don't, like Drew, I wanted to sell it for 18. He said, no, no, we can get 40 for this house. If I fix it up, it won't take me more than 15. I'll use my crew. You won't have to do anything. I'll even cart out the garbage, OK? Well, the garbage was good enough, by the way. All that stuff, they carted it out to the front of the property. The neighborhood took it. <laughs> $300, the city of Daytona charged me for what was left, and all the stuff was gone. By May of this year, we sold this house for $39,900. He put, not me, because I told him I wasn't fixing it, $15,000 into it, which he got back. So we made, basically, $19,900 on this house in four months.